As we become more accustomed to the control and feel of driving the car, we automatically give more attention to looking ahead on the road, sizing up the situation and planning our next driving move. Road observation depends particularly on concentration, for without this we tend to miss clues with which to assess conditions ahead. In order to correctly assess these conditions, we must have the ability to see clearly and know what to look for. But the factors which most affect our field of vision are not easily defined, so we will illustrate the principles of these on this model. One thing we need to consider at this stage is the factor points of vision. Assume that the roads here are perfectly flat, that there are no buildings or other obstructions in the way. We will have unobstructed forward vision to the horizon. Hazards can be observed well in advance and suitable measures taken to avoid any mishap. A very different situation exists where forward vision is obstructed by, for example, buildings along the sides of the road. We cannot see through the buildings and our forward vision becomes cone-shaped, restricted by the building alignments. Although this is very obvious, the plan view helps us to fix it in mind and also helps us to appreciate how much we cannot see and what little warning we will have of approaching hazards. Of course, the situation changes as our position relative to the obstruction changes. Our zone of visibility widens progressively. Until there is practically no obstruction to total visibility. And this clearly is the point to which we must approach with caution, prepared to take any evasive action. Zones of visibility and invisibility apply to any objects blocking our view. The vehicle travelling ahead has a wider zone of invisibility the closer we are to it. By dropping back we narrow this blind zone, thus allowing us to see more clearly the conditions ahead. Similarly, parked vehicles present a blind zone which diminishes as we pass, a zone which can hide a person suddenly stepping onto the road. New obstructions change the position of the zones of visibility as we progress. We must always keep this in mind and drive accordingly. In practice, the first essential is to be seated in the proper driving position. Our view should cover the area to the front and both sides with properly adjusted rear vision mirrors giving a clear view behind. To see clearly, the windscreen and windows need to be clear and free from stickers and dangling dolls. These block the view and distract our attention even though we may not realise it. Parts of the car door pillars and frames around the quarter light windows block the view too. We learn to take these into account and to see around them by moving the head or slightly changing our driving position. Our speed of travel greatly affects our vision. Driving fast, our eyes are drawn to the horizon. It means that we are looking well ahead, but we find that we don't notice other traffic and objects in the middle distance as well as we should. When we slow down, objects in the middle distance are easier to see. The correct conclusion then is to drive at a speed which lets us see and avoid possible dangers ahead. When approaching corners or any obstruction, we must be conscious of our points of vision and regulate our approach, course and speed accordingly. Wherever we drive, as conditions vary, so too does ease of driving and the amount of work we must do in interpreting the signs and clues provided. The least complex road system is the freeway system, which provides for lanes of fast flowing traffic uninterrupted by lights or crossing vehicles. Bridges or tunnels carry the cross traffic over or under the freeway. While feeder lanes allow traffic to enter without interruption to the main stream. 
Clearly marked signs provide clues of conditions ahead so we can anticipate directional changes easily and carry them out safely and in plenty of time. Freeway driving provides us with a minimal amount of interpretation, although because of increased speed, concentration is still essential. On the main divided highways, driving conditions, while still conducive to steady driving, are not as safe as on the freeways. The number of hazards increase as lights, crossing traffic or pedestrians break up the flow. Again, directional and warning signs may be present, but we must now rely more on interpretation of clues which sometimes remain obscure and may suddenly appear. Here, parked cars on the left may hide someone suddenly stepping onto the road, while on the right, two pedestrians are about to cross with a pram. Our driving plan must account for any emergency that may arise. The road sign on the left warns of crossroads ahead and looking ahead, we can see we are approaching a controlled intersection. The lights are green in our favour, but we must approach at a speed which will allow us to safely stop should they suddenly change. The intersection is clear, although on the left a car is about to enter our lane. We must allow for him should he not give way to us. Highways and other busy thoroughfares sometimes pass through suburban shopping areas where the traffic flow is often slowed by crowded streets. Crosswalks, jaywalkers, lights, crossing and slow-moving traffic all add to the congestion found in these busier areas. Pedestrians may suddenly dart across the road or cars suddenly pull away from the curb. The parked delivery truck before the crosswalk could easily hide a pedestrian about to cross or a car about to enter from the side street. We had better slow down here. Looking ahead, the pedestrian traffic lights are on red, but closer to us, we must be constantly aware of the parked cars and their capacity for hiding crossing pedestrians, especially children. The lights change to green, we can accelerate through although not too fast. The car directly in front may swerve to avoid the other parked cars. By contrast, the quieter suburban streets can often give a false impression of safety by their apparent lack of traffic. We must constantly look ahead and know what to expect in the different types of areas. For example, here we see a quiet street with no parked vehicles. However, there are numerous intersections, close together and each a hazard. In the suburbs, houses, fences and trees often block visibility of side streets, making a series of blind intersections. The temptation to speed up here could easily have disastrous results. Perhaps the most frustrating and tedious area through which to drive is the city block. Continued interruptions, slow traffic and distractions are numerous. Crossing pedestrians may catch the eye and distract us from other more dangerous hazards, turning or illegally parked cars, for example. We must constantly look ahead and concentrate on the ever-changing conditions. Although streets may be wide, tall buildings and overhanging shop roofs often cast contrasting areas of light and shade a condition easily deceiving the eye which cannot clearly adjust for both at once. Wherever we travel, as drivers, we must remain alert and concentrate on conditions around us, whether on country roads or city freeways where higher speeds prevail, or in the denser city traffic which necessitates a slower traffic pace. Whatever the conditions, we should always travel at a speed which allows us to recognise and interpret the clues pointing to conditions ahead, and once recognised, negotiate the hazards quickly and safely. In some cases, the signs are clear. In most, they are merely clues requiring an interpretation. If we can see clearly and interpret correctly, we will be able to drive smoothly, safely, and confidently.